In this video, we're going to talk about Playwright CLI, or otherwise called as the command line interface of Playwright. Playwright CLI is so powerful that it can do a lot of different operations. Let's first get into the installation part of the Playwright CLI. If you are from the Windows background, Playwright CLI is super easier to do. So if I just go to the Safari browser over here, and if I go to the docs, you can see there is something called as a command line tool over here. So the command line tool is the one which is going to show you how you can run the Playwright CLI. It's very, very simple as you can see that it's going to be a PowerShell script as you can imagine, which is going to run all these things for you. Like the PowerShell.ps1, which is sitting in the bin folder, which is going to be responsible for you to perform all the different operations, like installation of a browser. You can also do generation of the code, open a page, inspect a selector, take a screenshot, generate PDFs, and also install system dependencies. This is quite powerful because this is going to be helpful while we do execution in the CI CD pipelines, like updating the browsers and stuff. I will show you what I really mean. So this PS1 file is the one which is responsible for everything as I was talking about. So let's see how it's going to look like. So if I open a terminal over here and let me navigate to the directory where the playwright is actually sitting and I'm going to go to this particular directory. And you can see that there is something called as a playwright.ps1. So let's open this file. So if I just go into here and if I just go to the playwright.ps1, you can see that the playwright.ps1 is basically going to be just calling a PowerShell script, which is going to call the Microsoft.playwright.dll file. That's what is happening behind the scene. And what it's going to basically do is using the reflection of the assembly, it's going to load the file name, which is going to be the playwright.dll file. And then it's going to call the main method from the program.cs file, which is sitting inside the Microsoft Playwright DLL file. That's what it is doing. So this playwright.dll file is going to be the one which is responsible for doing everything. So if we just try to look at this DLL file and if we just try to see the source code, you will see what I really mean. But let's not go too detail about it. Now we have this particular PS1 file. If you are from Windows, operating system, you can just run the PowerShell script without any problem. But if you are like me, who is running the Mac operating system or Linux operating system, then probably you need to do some additional step. The good news about the PowerShell script execution in Mac OS and Linux operating system is we can run PowerShell in a cross platform as well. So all you need to do is just go to the browser over here and just search for PowerShell for Mac OS or Linux OS, whatever it is. So it's going to be pretty much exactly the same for both the operating system. Just go to the installation of PowerShell on the Mac OS and you will see that if you have the brew, you can just install the brew cask PowerShell like this. That's it. And you can see that this is the first thing that you need to run and then just run this guy and you can start working with the PowerShell command. So it's PWSH. That's what we need to do. And I've already did those operations. So if you just do PWSH something like this and if I hit enter you can see that it's going to bring you up the PowerShell 7.2.3 and it's going to show you the Microsoft Corporation. So basically it's a PowerShell and you can see that the path has been changed right now from this to this. So the terminal has been a bit changed this time which is cool. And now I can actually see the ls to see all the files and also it's going to show me the PowerShell.ps1 file which is great. And now if I want to execute this playwright.ps ps1 file all i have to do is playwright.ps1 and if i hit enter you will see that it is actually executing the file and in turn it's going to call that class file and in turn it's going to tell us everything pretty much like how it's happening behind the scene but now it's going to show me all the commands like open a url from a browser and also do a core generation and open a browser like firefox chrome or webkit take a screenshot of a file take a PDF, show trace, and help information. So all these operations we can do from the command line interface itself. So let's see how we can do the uh, code generation operation. It's quite interesting, really. So if you just go to the playwright, something like this, and if you just type code gen, and then if you just type HTTP colon EA app dot dot com, which we have been automating quite some time right now, it is going to be super easier using this playwright inspector, which is the code generation. See that it has already written the code for us, like the playwright. Uh, I mean, it's putting the using var playwright is equal to await playwright.create async. The browser is headless off. And also the new context, 
the new page remember this is exactly the same code that we have been writing even before over here see that this is exactly the same code that we tried writing and that's exactly what this guy's going to generate for us that is super cool and now if i just go to the login you can see that it is going to be writing the code for us and then if i type admin and the password as password maybe it's wrong P A S S W O R D, and then hit login you can see that it is now filling up everything for me and it's also waiting for the um, page to load which is automatic and then i'm going to click the employee list employee details hit log off so all these operations are going to be automatically generated and note that it is using the page.locator the one that we learned in our last lecture so that's what it is doing to locate the element and then perform the operation that's how basically it works which is great so this is how the record and playback option actually happens and you can just copy this code you can also export this code to java javascript python python async and playwright test which is great i'm just going to close this recorder so this is one of the option that is available for the playwrights uh, cli option with code generation other options that you have is Let's say you have installed the Playwright quite a long time before and now that there is a new browser has been came out and now you need to ensure that the browser has to be updated. You got to run this particular command, the Playwright install options of the browser. So which is going to be the dot slash Playwright dot PS1 and then you need to do this install and then you need to specify the option and the browser. So the options you can just ignore for now. You can just type help something like this any point of time and it's going to show you what are the options that you need to do and you can see that install chrome firefox like that so you could do everything so i'm going to say install chrome and if i hit enter it's going to give me a warning message saying chrome is already installed in the system do you really want to do it well it's just great you could able to force install the chrome if you wanted to that's another great option which is available in the playwright cli and the last option which I really like is the screenshot option. So let's say if I want to take a full page screenshot of my academy website, we can do that. So I have already did that. I'm going to show you how to do it again. So it's a playwright.ps1 and then I'm going to say screenshot and I think it's screenshot and then option URL and the file name. So I'm going to see what are the options is available and this is quite interesting basically you can see there are so many options available in the screenshot itself like you could wait for the selector wait for the timeout you can take a full page screenshot and also you can specify the browser types if you really wanted to like firefox chrome ie and then you can set a channel like the distribution channel for the chrome like see that chrome beta or ms edge dev and then you can set the geolocation a device type proxy wow that's super cool we could do almost everything over here i'm just gonna set what is called as a full page uh, because i need to take a full page screenshot of my academy website so https academy dot execute automation dot com hit enter but it's going to give me an as error message saying the file name is not been specified so the file name is going to be ea full page dot png and if i hit enter right now so what's happening is it's navigating to this particular website it has captured the full page screenshot and it has also saved it we can also specify that wait for the page to fully load something like that and that will be great as well because you see that there is a wait for selector so you if you know what element has to be waited until the page you know that it is fully been loaded let's say there is a loading icon which disappears you could do that as well so now that it has been saved uh, so let's see if I just do an ls if I have a ea full page dot png yeah it's there so let's go to that particular location and see if that particular page yeah there we go and you can see that the ea full page is rendering the whole page for me the whole academy has been rendered for me in the full page so this is great so this is the way that we can actually work with the playwright cli and also how we could able to empower everything using the playwright cli and using this playwright cli we can do a lot more option which i'm going to be covering in our upcoming 
videos of this course but as of now yeah this is what it is we could able to leverage the power of playwright cli to do a lot of different things now next lecture we're going to talk about the automatic weight of playwright